Greetings fellow programs. Welcome to the music studio of the video pop ball reach. And today we are having a look at a program known as the Yamaha Port Sound PSS 790 bulk dump and file handling utility. We're going to be looking at version one here, as the screen will suggest. This utility allows you to save and transfer data from your Yamaha Port Sound PSS790 keyboard via the MIDI ports onto an Atari ST, which then allows you to save your song sequencing data onto a floppy disk. Now, the reason why I chose to cover this is because I couldn't actually find any utility that worked simply straight out of the box. You might be able to use a universal SysX utility for bulk dumping, but I didn't have any luck with that. You might be able to use this program in an emulator such as Hatari, but I've not tried this since I don't have real hardware. 520ST. Okay, so let's have a look at the program. Just adjust my camera, get it to the end a bit. Okay, so as we can see here, I am running my Atari on a monochrome TV. It's not high res, it just happens to be monochrome because the TV is nice and small, which is what I want for my studio setup. Right, so before we begin, we should actually realise that for this to work, you have to use the MIDI output and input terminals. You can't use the pass-through. I did try running this through the pass-through of a 680, and it didn't work with the transfer. Bidirectionally, it didn't work, so you need to make sure you've got the input to the output of the Atari and the output of the Yamaha to the input of the Atari. You can't use the free. The free board doesn't actually work with this type of utility. At least not this one anyway. Right, so this is a compiled STOS assembly program by Graham Gelbrief and Dave Woodhouse. It has a copyright date of 1991. Bearing in mind that I think the keyboard itself was introduced in April 1990, I think. My one was manufactured in October of 1990, so the program's actually a tad newer than the actual keyboard itself, or at least this version of the program is. Right, on the disk tab of the menu, let's get a zoom in on that, there we go. We have quit. We have help, we have credits, and colour. Now, the colour, if we click next, we might be able to get some better contrasts here. But of course, if you have an actual black and white TV, uh, a good contrast would be beneficial in this case. On the file menu, we have load file, save file, free space default and erase file. I'm not sure what default's for, but the others are all relatively self-explanatory. The utility has a little file manager that allows you to organise the amount of songs that you have on your floppy disk, which is very handy and it's very easy to use. And of course we have the bulk dump tab, which has Yamaha to Atari or the Atari to Yamaha. Okay, so let's load a file and see how this works. Now, this program, which I think I got from Floppy Shop 016, it came with a variety of demo songs, which you can load into your Yamaha. Okay, so we're going to load one of these. Right, we've got Tangerine 719, so that must be rather Tangerine Dream inspired. Summertime. I think that's a size cow. Not sure. Kylie Minogue. Now that's pretty much stuff of that time. Yeah, 
let's try the Kylie inspired track because that's just going to sound so cheesy and so fun on the 790 so right so then we we select that file and we go on to return and then you hear the Robin is live doing its thing and that's that, that was relatively quick once you've loaded the file from the floppy disk into the Atari's memory, you're going to then need to transfer it from the Atari to the Yamaha. Okay, so we're going to click Atari to Yamaha. Now the moment you do this, the display on your Yamaha will change. If we go onto the multi-display here, right, we're going to click Atari to Yamaha. And then you'll see this display has changed to a countdown timer. This is the loading of sorts. And once this gets past B0, we will have the data loaded into the sequencer. And you see those little lights have lit up. Okay, so now we're going to hit the play button on this. Disc to the Yamaha. Yeah, you can tell I'm probably quite a fan of the Yamaha gear, really. I've got two poor sounds, a Yamaha Mobi track tape. And somewhere behind this audience, we have a Yamaha DD10 drum machine. I also have uh, a bunch of DD5 pads. And that PSS 170 mini keyboard as well. Well, that was fun. Right, so the next part we're going to do is to clear the memory of the Atari. Um, not the Atari, we're going to clear the memory of the Yamaha. Okay, so we're just going to hit clear. And we're just going to clear all the channels. So, yeah, I'm just going to do a quick demo on the sequencer and then we're going to send this to the Atari and save it to floppy disk. And we can see that work for real, so. Let's start with uh, recording the company then, I think, because I'm feeling a bit lazy. And the fact that I've not really seriously done much in the web keyboards in probably a couple of years. Uh,
but it will do. Right, let's add some pants to that, just spice it up a little, and we're just going to send this to the Atari. work in there. Remember, we're going to save it to the Atari, reload it, and we'll work on it later. Alright. Now for the transfer from the Yamaha to the Atari. Okay. In order to do this, we are going to operate the Atari first and ask for Yamaha to Atari from the bulk dump tab. And we're going to click that. Bulk dump synth to RAM. Right, the Atari is now waiting to receive data from the Yamaha. Okay, so we're going to go to the Yamaha and we have these controls here. We have, what we do first, we will press Cable Transmit Channel and then we'll press the Bulk Dump button. Now when we do that, we're going to see this countdown timer again, just like when we loaded that kindly inspired tune from the Atari to the Yamaha. Okay, ready? Now what you do, you have to press it again once the BDP is lit. So we're going to press the bulk dump button again. I'm going to watch the countdown. Yeah, we're going to watch this in real time. If you're going to be playing around with ancient technology, you have to be accepting of the limits. Especially the amount of time they can consume. Now once it hits zero, you'll see that the screen says data received. Now you can save it to a floppy drive. Uh, one thing to know is that the floppy shop disk that I got this utility from, there's not enough space on there to actually save your own stock, so you're going to have to Take that disc out as I only have a single floppy drive. And then we're going to put in a disc. Ideally an empty one that's been PC dot formatted. We're going to pop that in there. And hopefully there'll be enough space for us to save the little tune that we've just composed. Right, we're going to go onto file, load file, save file. Uh, we now have the drive working. So now we are just going to simply save the file. 
I'm going to give it a name. Now, this screen, you can simply just type in what you want to call your track. So just call demo 14. And then you just hit return. And it will save your sequence data to the floppy disk. That's pretty neat. Okay then, let's try that out. So we're gonna clear that. Melody one, melody two. Okay, now we're assuming that we still have that demo that we've just erased. Uh, we've obviously saved it to the floppy disk drive, so what we're gonna do we're going to quit the program. Yes. We're gonna go back to the gem desktop, the, the operating system TOS. Right, we're going to access the floppy disk again. Oh, I've got to actually put the program disk back in, not the storage disk. Right, I've got a little bit of a cookie problem there. Come on you, we've got other software to load. Whatever you say, mate. Whatever you say. Seven ninety dump folder open. Mm. And we have the seven ninety program here. Open that. Disc back in. Da -da -da. Demo fourteen appears to be on the disc. Right, so we're going to click that. Press return, and hopefully this shall just load just like the. I need demo that we loaded earlier. Tari to Yamaha. There we go. Countdown on the keyboard is starting. Round buffer to synth, transmitting data to synth. Which will probably download some cookies of sorts into the sequencer. There we go. And it appears we've got our song back. And that's it really. They're the essential basics of using this handy utility. So it's even some data on the seminar tea. I consider that to be quite good because I quite like how the sequencer works on this keyboard. It's multi track but simplicity as well. I'm not sure if default might actually be what you use to clear the song memory of the Atari. I'm entirely sure of that. But there you go. Okay. 
I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, and I will see you again next video. Um, I'd probably like to do maybe a few more videos about the Yamaha 790 and 680 keyboards. They're quite nice pieces of hardware. So until then, adios.